There's Brad here. So today I'm going to talk about Chris Myers' positions, okay, his holdings for Woodlock House Family Capital. Last week I covered a blog post that he did uh, called 100 Baggers, you know, Q&A Finding 100 Baggers. And in this blog post, uh, he mentioned six of his 11 holdings. Uh, so we're going to do kind of an initial, you know, I'm going to apply some of my filters to those six holdings to kind of see what we're working with here. Um, but in this paragraph, he, he mentions a few of these and talks about them briefly. So he's asked, what stock do I think could be a 100 bagger? Okay, What all of us want to know, of course. Um, I bet Evolution Gaming, based in Sweden, will get there. Constellation Software is almost there. Maybe it's already there, including dividends and its spinoff, Topicus. Uh, another stock that seems to have all the ingredients to make a run over the next two decades. I own all these stocks, by the way. A couple of stocks I own are already in the club, the 100 Bagger Club, Copart and Heiko, but I believe are still great businesses with bright futures and well worth holding. Okay, and he mentions earlier in the blog post, uh, Texas Pacific Land Trust. So what I did, I put these six of the 11 that he mentioned uh, in this spreadsheet here. And we're going to take a look at some of the metrics for these companies. So the first one, Evolution Gaming Group. What is it? It's a live game streaming service for casino operators based in Sweden. Uh, if we go into ticker terminal here, we can read... Uh, the description, the company runs the game from a casino table, which is streamed in real time and end, end users make betting decisions on their devices, desktops, smartphones, tablets. Uh, it also runs on-premise studios at land-based casinos. So that's a pretty interesting business model. Uh, you can see what the price has done over the last six years since the company went public you see that exponential growth curve. That's exactly what we're looking for, uh, for these 100 baggers. We wanna see this compound growth curve. And seeing it in just six short years is, is quite promising. Um, so let's take a look at a few other metrics for the company. It's about a 36 billion market cap company. Uh, pretty high insider ownership, the highest of these six on the list at 17%, which I really like to see. Now, the gurus column, which I pull from Data Roma, doesn't usually work very well for companies outside of the U.S. Okay, I, I still need to refine kind of how I identify guru owners for companies outside the U.S. Um, otherwise, it's going to be a disadvantage for these companies you know, overseas. Uh, no write-up in Value Investors Club. Acquirers multiple, 97. Okay, That is very high. That's higher than Amazon uh, for comparison. So, you know, that, that's a tough pill to swallow uh, in terms of considering buying this company now. Uh, very impressive 10-year revenue growth at 44%, the highest of and not 10-year revenue growth. Obviously, this company has only been public for six years. So that's the six-year revenue growth. For the rest of them, uh, it'll be the 10-year revenue growth. Uh, we can see a compound annual growth rate, 105%. Okay, If we look at ticker here, uh, you see 105% CAGR. And then the total price appreciation, 70 879x okay so very impressive to get a 79 bagger in six years this is this is a special company uh, I don't have particular interest in the gambling space uh, I'm not super excited to own a company in that space so you know this one is a pass for me but for any of you who are interested in this space uh, casino operators gambling, this could really be something to look at, particularly if there's a bump in the road in the near future and the stock price uh, gets you know, down to a level that I'm more comfortable uh, with in terms of acquirers multiple or price to earnings, whatever cheapness metric you wanna use for that. 
Uh, but that's the first one that Chris Meyer mentioned. The second one, Constellation Software. This is a company out of Canada, global software developer. So really what this is, it's a holding company for software companies. They acquire uh, you know, software companies that can be improved uh, and, and they just continue to do that. This has been an incredible performer uh, over the last 15 years since it went public uh, in 2006. 36% compound annual growth rate. That's a double every two years, okay? which is incredible. It's, it's pretty tough to beat that. Um, a 99 bagger in 15 years. So just, just incredible growth for Constellation Software. Um, you know, 46, it's high. It's not as high as Amazon. It's perhaps reasonably priced for what this company has done. Of course, the big question is, how long can this company continue to generate these kinds of returns? At what point is the market cap going to start to slow it down, right? So that's that's Constellation Software. Um, there's there's one guru that owns it. You know, I wish there were a, a more recent write up, um, but there's actually a more recent write up that I've come across. Uh, I think it's it's a blog called The Tenth Man. Okay, the tenth man did a great write up on Topicus, which I'm going to talk about next, uh, and also on Constellation Software. So check those out if you guys are interested in kind of software holding companies. Um, the next one, Topicus. This is a spinoff of Constellation Software, which is exactly what Chris Meyer says about it in uh, his blog post. So. Um, you know, almost a three billion market cap company, and it really just IPO'd two months ago in February of 2021. So there's not a lot of information on it yet, um, but it seems to have a lot of the same DNA that Constellation Software had. Okay, so that in and of itself is compelling. There's something I read in Corner of Berkshire and Fairfax about Topicus that, you know, it's currently trading at like 40 times 2021 free cash flow, which, you know, feels a bit frothy to me. Um, it's, it's difficult for me to justify paying that kind of price. Um, but similar with Evolution Gaming, you know, it might be one to put on the watch list. And, and if something happens where, you know, the price takes a hit, uh, could easily become a compelling investment opportunity. So, you know, how I'm going to approach this one, I'm going to learn more about it. I'm going to see what I can find out there uh, about the company and, you know, perhaps come up with a target price for it and simply wait to see if Mr. Market delivers that uh, entry price at some point. So that's that's topic. It's, and, and the company is really focusing on software companies in Europe, OK, which is different than the focus for Constellation Software. And there's a case to be made in this write up by the 10th man that um, uh, it may be actually easier to find opportunities in that space in Europe than it was where Constellation Software was shopping. So. Uh, definitely want to take a look at if you have any interest in this particular industry. Uh, next one on the list, Copart, online auctions and vehicle remarketing services. Okay, so Copart, second highest insider ownership on the list. I really like that. There's three guru investors who own this one as of the fourth quarter, 2020. Uh, there is a write-up from 2018, about three years ago, in Value Investors Club. Uh, acquires multiple 32. Um, perhaps not unreasonable for a company that has generated a 21% compound annual growth rate um, over the last 27 years. So let's take a quick peek at Copart in Ticker Terminal. So Copart, I believe, has been around for quite a while. Um, 
founded in 1982 in Dallas, Texas. So, you know, this says, my spreadsheet says 27 years. Uh, the, the service I was using to calculate the compound annual growth rate only went back to, um, you know, 1994. Uh, so that's, that's the data that I had of, or 1996, right? 94, that's right. Um, but you know, 188 bagger in 27 years, that's, uh, that's, that's very strong. Any, anytime you can get a compound annual growth rate over 20% for multiple decades, uh, that's, that's a great investment right there. Um, Anything else I want to say about Copart? Let's look at the chart over, you know, as far back as we go here. So here it goes back to what early 2005. Again, you see not as pronounced uh, as Evolution Gaming, but you see that kind of exponential growth curve starting to kick in, um, you know, over the last five years or so. So that's that's Copart. Um, a 20 bagger over the last 16 years. And uh, obviously a lot more than that over 27 years, 188 bagger. So the cool thing about doing these kind of studies of companies that have generated 100 bagger or more returns, you start to see patterns differently. You start to understand, okay, what does it look like for a company to have exponential growth uh, in the CAGR, in, you know, the, the multiples of price. Um, you start to look for these different patterns than what we're used to seeing. Um, so that, that's a perk. Uh, that's Copart. Again, I don't have any particular knowledge of this industry, uh, online auctions and vehicle remarketing services. It's not in my wheelhouse. So, so Copart is a pass for me, but, uh, you know, impressive, impressive performance over the last three decades or so. Heiko Corporation, aerospace defense and electronic related products and services. I'm just going to refresh my webcam here. And I am going to float. Let's float that webcam. So Heiko, what has Heiko done? Um, let's look it up here in ticker. So Heiko has been around for a very long time, uh, but the current management, I believe, took over in 1990. So that's kind of the time frame we're going to look at. Founded in 1957. Okay. So pretty old company. Um, so we're looking at 29 years. Okay. For what I can look up in the service I'm using. Um, 22% compound annual growth rate, a 329 bagger. You guys, it's incredible to see the difference here. There's a 1% CAGR difference and a two-year time difference. And look at the difference in the bagger, the bagger dumb. 188 bagger versus a 329 bagger. So, you know, when you look out multiple decades, uh, the one or two percent makes a huge difference in terms of, you know, your your bottom line uh, in your investment portfolio. So it's it's pretty interesting to to see that here. Uh, Fifty two acquires multiple, pretty pretty frothy. Uh, it's possible that earnings just took a little bit of a hit the last year, and that's kind of distorting the numbers a little bit in terms of looking at this company over the long term. So, you know, I don't know how much emphasis I would put on acquirers multiple for these long term compounders, but you don't want to pay any price. Obviously, um, you want to be cognizant of the price you're paying versus the value you're getting uh, the earning power over time um, for however long you plan to hold these companies. Hopefully it's multiple decades. Um, so that's Heiko Corporation. Again, not an industry that I have knowledge about or, or any interest in, really. 
Uh, and the last one on the list, Texas Pacific Land Corporation. Okay, land, re land and resource management business based in Texas. I think oil, natural gas, water, some of the um, resources that are involved with this business. Market cap of 12 billion. Uh, the weakest insider ownership that I've seen on the list. I'm actually kind of surprised. Well, maybe that's changed over time. I don't know. My understanding of Chris Meyer is he doesn't like to look at things that have kind of less than 15% or so insider ownership. Um, but you know, it's not necessarily a, a hard and fast, you know, must have situation for him. Um, I imagine long-term CAGR is, is equally or perhaps even more important than this insider ownership. No gurus for Texas Pacific Land Corp. Uh, there is the most recent write-up out of any of these companies just uh, about two years ago. 10-year uh, revenue growth, 32% very strong with revenue growth. Um, Again, this is, well, let's see how old this company is here. I think it's, I think like 1888, uh, this company was founded. So very old company. <clears throat> let's see how close I got there. 1888, it was founded. Headquarters in Dallas, Texas. Uh, let's see what this looks like. So again, I think what Ticker does um it only goes back about 16 years for the price history, regardless of how old the company is. Um, but again, you see that, you know, a, a bit choppier than Evolution Gaming or some of the others. But I mean, you, you do a best fit curve here. It's, it's a pretty nice, um, you know, exponential growth curve for Texas Pacific Land Trust. Uh, and you can see over the last 16 years, about 29% compound annual growth rate, and you've got, you know, 64 bagger over 16 years. So, you know, <clears throat> it, it's it's nice to compare, you know, kind of the, the overall compound annual growth rate for however long you can get data. Ideally, however long the business has been around, and then look at kind of a more recent compound annual growth rate uh, over the last, you know, uh, decade or two. Uh, so 29% over the last decade and a half is very strong for compound annual growth rate. So I like to see that. Um, and, you know, 464 bagger over 33 years, uh, nobody's going to be disappointed in, in that result. So uh, again, though, not, not an industry that I'm, that I'm interested in gas, oil, uh, things like that. Uh, so really the only one on this list um, that I'm planning on looking deeper into is Topicus, okay? Uh, if it does in fact share much of the DNA as Constellation software, and I can get it at a price that doesn't feel like, you know, I'm, I'm really just paying a very frothy uh, number for this company, a, a frothy multiple. Um, it could be interesting, could be very interesting over the next decade or two, uh, which Chris comes, comes directly out and says in that blog post. So <clears throat> look for a deeper dive on Topicus uh, in the near future. Let me know if you're doing a deeper dive on any of these or if any of them are on your wish list and uh, any other holdings that Chris has, right? Uh, I want to add those. I'm pretty sure he owns Howard Hughes. He's talked about Howard Hughes Corporation in past blog posts. I know Bill Ackman is also pretty heavy into Howard Hughes Corporation. Um, but if you've been following Chris Meyer's blog and you've seen you know, other companies that he talks about where he has an ownership stake, let me know and I'll kind of build out this list. Hopefully we can get all 11 of his holdings in here and um, find a couple more hundred baggers uh, collectively. So anyway, guys, uh, yep. Thanks for being here today and uh, we're going to keep it rolling. So I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.